Hey guys, as mentioned in the other video, they have added a bunch of new mythic artifacts to the game. There's 11 they've added, a bunch of exclusives for the classes, as well as a few for specific heroes. So with that, if we go to Void Rift and we go to this random exclusive mythic here, we can have a look at all of the new artifacts that have been added. So let's take a look at what's new. Crown of the Depths, Shamir. So basic attack has a 25% chance to release one extra energy ball, and that will increase with dupes. I think that's pretty good because he gets benefits that scale based on the number of debuffs he applies. And I think this means that he'll be applying those debuffs a lot faster. So he'll be slowing them more, they'll be taking more damage from him. And if you have his awakenings, which are quite easy to get, as he's a very common summon, he could actually be pretty good. So that doesn't sound too bad. Obviously, if you're gonna get an exclusive artifact, you don't really want it for Shamir, but not all artifacts are made equally. So this could actually make him pretty powerful. It depends if you can get the dupes, how good it is at that point. If it's like a 40% chance, it could actually be really good. So I'm curious to see how this looks. This is basically a high chance for an extra attack on his basic attack. So I think it could be quite good. Anyway, Lionheart Scepter is for Regulus. During ultimate increases the hero's max HP by an extra 20% and max HP of allies within the ultimate range by 10%. This is really good. I think this is pretty great. This is really good for gear raid 2 to help your allies survive, especially like the earth shakes that the boss does in the later stages that can absolutely decimate healers. So Regulus is one of the best options for preventing that. And this artifact will make it a lot easier for him to save his allies. So I think that's a, a pretty good one to get. Next up we have Skull of Aya. This is for Abomination, of course. And it increases his initial rage by 450. I personally don't rate this. It does get him going sooner, which is nice. But in my Abomination Guide video, I said it takes a bit under a minute for his ultimate to activate the second time and it'd be permanent. So unless you're using him in a scenario where your most of your use for him is within the first 30 seconds, I don't see this being that useful, especially because you're taking this instead of taking something that would actually grant him a damage increase. So I don't rate the Skull of Aya too much. Scarlet Dagger is for Nyx, increases her AoE damage by 15% and she gains 15% penetration during her ultimate. It feels like they're trying to balance the heroes that were kind of weak by giving them exclusive artifacts to make them strong. Because we had Zealus, Nyx, and Shamir, three heroes who were kind of considered to be like the lower tier legendaries. Nyx is not awful. I mean, even Zealus has his uses for sure, but they're definitely fall behind a lot of the other legendaries. So I think this may be their attempt to try to bring them back into the foray for later game players if you're able to get hold of these. Because this is a significant boost. That's a, that's a lot of AoE damage. That's a lot of penetration for her ultimate. Because these will both apply during her ultimate. And it'll be interesting to see how much this scales up. I'm guessing it's going to be like 1 or 2% gain per dupe you increase it with. But I think Scarlet Dagger looks pretty good. So next up we have Lunar Veil for Island. 60 seconds after deployment gains permanent invisibility and increases attack speed by 50. What? What is this? What? What? That's just super bizarre. I just have a hard time wrapping my head around that. So an artifact just gives you permanent invisibility? Wow, I mean, that seems crazy to me. Like, yeah, you, you might think, well, where am I going to use it? It's more just the, the utility of having that as an option is kind of insane, in my opinion. Just like, oh yeah, my island, after 60 seconds, she just doesn't care. She's she's not there. In Gear Raid 2, boulders can't be thrown at her. They'll be thrown at someone else who they're probably going to get smashed. But she's an attack scaling hero, I think. I could be wrong. I think she scales an attack. So she's not the tankiest. So having invisibility after 60 seconds is kind of crazy. I think that's really good. I think that's really good. And increasing her attack speed is, is nice as well. It gives her a lot faster healing output, which is kind of her specialty, like fast, rapid AoE healing. That seems really good. I, I just, I like utility. That's my thing. I like having options to do weird things. And the Lunar Vow definitely gives Island an interesting option. All right, moving on. Bones of Savagery. This is for Valeria. During the ultimate, for each attack dealt, increase crit damage by 10%, stacking up to three times and the effect expires after the ultimate ends. I think her ultimate was around 12 seconds in duration, I believe. 30% crit damage is not the best, but those are both green numbers, and I think that means it can be increased by getting extra copies. So I'm not sure, maybe it'll be like 12 and four, but I don't know, it'll be interesting to see how that stacks. Interesting tidbit, crit damage is not as good as attack. I used to think they scaled equally, but as I mentioned in a previous video, Timco pointed out to me, that it's actually attack is dealt first, defense is deducted from your attack, and then the attack is multiplied by crit damage and other modifiers to deal the net damage to the enemy. The order is a bit wonky there, but it, what it results in is attack being better than crit damage, which is super annoying. So that means this artifact is not that great. The potential damage increase isn't bad, but 
I know I don't really rate it. It's only active while her ultimate is up, and she needs to be attacking during her ultimate. And the ultimate doesn't last super long, and this expires after her ultimate. It doesn't seem amazing to me. I could be wrong, but it doesn't sound great to me on paper. So next up we have Soul Drainer. This is a new limited hero artifact. This is not a like an uh, exclusive hero. This is just a class limited one. This is not uh, exclusive to a particular hero. So this is for fighters and it increases their block by one. That's interesting. That's really interesting. This is really good. Just immediately this is really good. And it restores 0.7% of the hero's max HP every time the hero deals damage to one target effective up to three targets. See, to me, this is the item you want on your abomination. This will grant your abomination the block of a defender and it will give him health restore whenever he deals damage to a target. But it specifies up to three targets and he has AoE built in. When his ultimate is up, he has permanent AoE and in two tiles. So he can be blocking three enemies and healing himself for 0.7% of his massive max HP for every enemy he hits. And that will no doubt undoubtedly increase with any dupes you get of Soul Drainer. Soul Drainer to me looks really good. There's so many times you want to use a fighter as a defender, but their block value kind of makes it tricky. I can imagine this also being useful in some arena teams where people are trying to block with just fighters and, and mash everything down quick. But Soul Drain, it looks good to me. Next up, we have another fighter one, Void Gazer. This is cool. So previously, we were just kind of all using Scarlet Hunt because it worked well with Salazar. But now we're getting more things. So it deals increased damage to enemies beyond one tile from the hero. For every one tile beyond the first, damage is increased by 3%. And this is for fighters. So specifically, this is going to be for Arrogance. Zilla 2, Araka, and Valeria. Those are the main ones I think of. Obviously, there are some two tile fighters, but this is better for people with longer range than that. And A1 Valeria has four tiles forward, not just three like Arrogant, Zilla 2, and Araka. So Valeria... I'm saying Valeria, sorry, Valkaria. So Valkaria will benefit quite a lot from this, not Valeria. So yeah, this definitely feels like a Valkaria artifact. I mean, it's even got angel wings on it, so this is, this is for our Valkaria, especially an A1 Valkaria. And... It's not bad. It's not bad. For every one tile beyond the first, it's not great. <laughs> it's not bad, but it doesn't seem great. It's like maybe, what, 9% damage bonus at max reach for Valkyria at A1. It doesn't feel that good to me. It's a permanent damage increase at that range, but that won't work in Guild Boss. I think the Guild Boss's range kind of counts as the entire arena, so I don't think you get range bonuses. I could be wrong, but I think that's the way it works. So Void Gazer doesn't seem good to me. Soul Drainer seems really good to me. I just, I think it's cool for utility. There are some times where you want to get away with using a fighter. Another good example for this, I just remembered, in Void Rift, in the first chapter, in the first phase, there are enemies and, and stages where the boss will throw boulders at defenders placed. If you can get a tanky enough fighter and give them this artifact, then they are better to use than a defender in some cases, if you can keep them alive. Anyway, so this is a new limited one for defenders. After every 10 basic attacks landed, deal AoE physical damage one time equal to 200% of damage multiplier to at most 5 targets and restores HP for 10% of the damage dealt. So every 10 attacks they deal an AoE burst, hitting up to 5 enemies for 200% damage and they self heal for 10% of the damage they deal. That seems really good to me. That seems really good. So of damage multiplier, I wonder what that is. Because it doesn't say attack. Because my first thought was I'd put this on my Garn to give him some more AoE damage potential because it might actually be pretty good for him. But I was worried about because he scales on defense, not attack. But it says damage multiplier, so it might just be fair however they deal damage. So I would definitely try this out. This seems like it could be good. I would use this on Garn. I would use it on Captain Reeve. And I'm not too sure who else I would use it on because other people wouldn't really be built for damage. I build those two defenders to deal damage because, you know, they can. Besides those two, I don't know who would really benefit from this artifact. Anyway, moving on. Prayer Scroll. This is for healers, a new limited, class limited artifact. Increases healing effect, ST, I don't know what that means, by 3% for every additional ally present in range, stacking up to four times. So this isn't bad. That's potentially 12% healing effect increase, which isn't crazy good, but it's not bad at all. There aren't really many really, really good healing artifacts around, so this is quite good, I think. It's a shame we didn't get any like hero limited ones in particular. Imagine if there was one for Dolores. I know she's an epic, but hi, that would be cool. But yeah, this seems pretty decent to me. Prayer Scroll seems good. Next up we have Blood Signet. This is for Marksman. Reduces max HP by 30% and increases crit damage by 20%. It's guaranteed damage and it's not conditional. So a lot of the other artifacts for Marksman are conditional. 
they are only applied so long as you are hitting the same enemy a certain amount of times the enemies are x distance away from you stuff like that this is permanently applied so it is more versatile than the other ones again i take a bit of issue with crit damage because it doesn't scale quite as well but i think it's not bad at all i think it's actually fairly decent it's just not crazy good if that makes sense so next up we have the soul reaper insignia another one for marksman increases damage by five percent and after killing the target increases an additional damage of 5%, stacking up to two times, but it only lasts for 10 seconds. You get a flat 5% damage increase, which can increase to 15% if you're able to kill two enemies within 10 seconds consistently. So yeah, not bad, not bad at all. It's a flat 5% damage increase. Overall, I think it's reasonable. It's something for like gear raid free is where you would use this, where you are killing enemies quite quickly. I don't think it's insanely good, but it is decent. And then we actually have five more exclusive hero artifacts. So this is for Apsan. Uh, he's another ranged fighter I missed earlier regarding the other artifact, the, the fighter one that does damage based on distance. So this extends the duration of Glory Recalled, which is I believe when he gets deployed, he gains like attack speed boost and stuff like that. Uh, increases the duration by 10 seconds. And while it's active, he increases damage by 15 seconds, 15%. Personally, I think Apsan is kind of underwhelming, and I, I don't know why they just didn't put this in his base kit. This doesn't feel like a bolt-on. It feels like it should have just been there already. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure this is pretty good. I think this is quite good for him. It will make him stronger for sure. I mean, 15% extra damage during this window is good, but again, it's a temporary window. It doesn't last super long. So I don't think it's amazing. It's decent, but I don't think it's crazy good. It's not something I'll be after. Dream Glow. So this is for Dosomi. He is Chaos Dominion Healer. And he's kind of weird. I did pull this one. I have tested him a bit. I don't think very much of him. He's definitely a niche hero and one that you would use exclusively with a Chaos Dominion team. Other than if you're trying to purge debuffs. But let's see what this does to him. When basic attacks inflict magic incense. So this is the buff he applies that either purges debuffs if you're above 50% HP. Or it heals you if you're under 50% HP. There is a chance equal to 50% of crit rate to grant a target to grant the target a shield equal to 10% of their max HP lasting 6 seconds. So now he becomes a healer that can just throw out shielding. So he'll be purging and applying shields and if you drop lower on HP then he heals you. So this is interesting. They don't want to make him heal by default because if that's the case it kind of goes against how the Chaos Dominion faction works. They all want to be lower on HP. That's how the faction lord benefits work. So it's an interesting choice there. 10% of the target's max HP is decent, but it's not insane, especially if you're healing basically anyone who's not a fighter or a defender. Even some fighters is quite low, but fighters and defenders especially are good for this, which kind of makes sense because that's where a lot of the faction lies are in fighters and the faction lord being Garn, a defender. So yeah, it's not crazy good. I would definitely use it if I had disown. I would definitely use it if I got it for my disown though. So yeah, it's not bad. I think it's actually pretty good and it depends on what scales here with with dupes if this 10% scales up to like 20% then it becomes actually quite good and I may actually use him outside of well I may actually use him <laughs> so yeah that's interesting betrayal forge I'm guessing this is Azhor yeah there we go Azhor a exclusive for this hero during the ultimate increases block by one okay and when in the heated state which I believe is after he struck with his hammer 10 times increases the chance to inflict stun by 10% which is pretty good and each attack restores the hero's HP equal to 3% of max HP. Okay, so this actually changes things. I think this makes Azhor pretty decent. He now has pretty good self-sustain. I would argue very effective self-sustain. I would personally build Azhor with a lot of attack speed so he can get into his heated state faster and apply more stuns. So I think Azhor is a defender that you want attack speed on. With this artifact, the stuns will become even more likely. He'll be able to block more and he'll have self healing when his ultimate is active. I think that's all pretty good. I think that's actually a pretty good artifact. It's one of the better ones we've seen. It's for one of the worst heroes. I think they're trying to buff heroes that are not particularly popular or are rated to perform quite badly. And this is definitely a fairly strong artifact in what it does. An extra block, extra chance to stun and 3% max HP per hit is really nice so yeah betrayal forge seems really good i'll be interested to see how this scales as well and two more magmus's molten heart when lava flow is activated deals extra damage equal to five percent of the hero's max hp wow magmus does have really good base stats that seems good again that seems really good to me actually these are interesting i believe lava flow is his ultimate kind of a big aoe pool of damage around him 
this I think would be pretty good because it kind of gives you an interesting incentive to build more HP on Magmas. You'd probably put him in a Glacier set, although, you know, it's kind of funny because he's a fire guy. But yeah, I would I would try him in a, a, a Glacier set, kind of like a bruisery build, like I would give an Abomination. But I think this has potential to be very powerful. You'd have to see how it works out, if that can crit, if that benefits from other multipliers, or if it's just a flat 5% damage. But the Mag Molten Heart seems quite good. And finally, Destruction Cog. This is for Cratch. He is one of the least popular heroes as well, so I don't know how I feel about this. I think this is not the way to balance weak heroes. I think they should just balance the weak heroes and then have interesting artifacts. It feels like they're trying to use these artifacts to boost weak heroes. Anyway, Cannon Overload has a 50% chance to fire free extra cannonballs. I think this is his ultimate, which is auto-activated. It has a very low rage cap, so it activates really fast. And yeah, that seems pretty good. 50% chance to fire free extra cannonballs. That seems good to me. He's got a really, really low rage cap. If you build him, if you give him loads of attack speed and you give him extra rage regen or something, then he can probably be churning through this really quickly. If you do decide to build a Cratch, and especially if you're late game, I would recommend the Soulbound Arcana gear set for him i know it's a super end game set to get because you need to be in gear raid 3 stage 19 onwards it increases the damage that the hero deals by 10 percent every time they ultimate stacking several times so it's pretty crazy and he ultimates so rapidly that he would get through those stacks really quickly and hit max stacks very early so if you do want to use cratch i think this is a good artifact for him and i would give him the soulbound arcana set and I think he may be able to do pretty good AoE damage. I think he might have potential there. So that covers all of the new artifacts. Quite interesting. Again, I'm not too sure how I feel about them handling it this way. Just, you know, mainly focusing on buffing heroes which are underutilized. Because it's not like we can reliably get these. I mean, let's see. I don't think you can fuse these. I'm going to quickly go check in the artifacts. Can you fuse them now? Were they added to this summon pool? They were not. The exclusive ones were not added. As you can see, the ones without this top right corner icon are exclusives. And right now, only Zealus' manuscript is in there, which ironically doesn't work. <laughs> I'll have to retest to see if they fixed it this patch. It'd be cool if they would tell us if they fixed these things. Well, they'll probably just pretend it was working all along, not say anything and quietly fix it one day. But I'll retest that after this video and leave a comment letting you know if it does work or not. But anyway, yeah, none of the new exclusives can be gained through here. They have to be gained through the Void Rift.